This is a clip from Basketball at the Bar Live. Calvin, let's talk about the Detroit Pistons. They finished uh, last season with the second to worst record in the Eastern Conference at 23 and 59. They have the fifth pick in this year's NBA draft. And let's talk a little bit about the team here. To give some context, I want to break down just the depth chart real quick and uh, the salary cap, and then we'll hear uh, your thoughts on how they can rebuild this franchise. So first off, the starting point guard last season was Corey Joseph. Killian Hayes was filling in uh, as the backup. Cade Cunningham, an exciting player to watch, is their starting shooting guard, and they have Frank Jackson coming off the bench to back him up. Sadiq Bey fills in the three spot for them. Uh, Jeremy Grant fills in the power forward spot, and they traded for Marvin Bagley last season, so he's backing up Jeremy uh, at the four. And Isaiah Stewart, uh, you may remember him for getting into it with LeBron James this last offseason and bleeding all over the court. He is currently <laughs> the starting center on the Detroit Pistons. And looking here at the salary cap, Jeremy Grant next year will be entering in the last year of his deal at $20.9 million dollars. Kelly Olenek is still on the squad, $12.8 million next season, and a partially guaranteed $12.1 the season after that. Marvin Bagley's contract is expiring at the end of the season. He will be a restricted free agent if they offer him the qualifying offer, so we will see what happens with that. Cade Cunningham is entering in year two of his rookie deal at $10.5 million. Corey Joseph has a player option of $5.1 million for next season. Killian Hayes entering in year three of his rookie deal. Uh, Diallo is entering in year four of his rookie deal. Isaiah Stewart entering in year three as well. Frank Jackson also entering in year two, or sorry, year four of his uh, rookie scale contract. And Sadiq Bey is starting year three of his rookie contract. You have a couple other young guys on this squad, but for the most part, this team's looking good. They got about $40 million in salary cap space. Calvin, I want to hear from you. If you're the Detroit Pistons, what are your top priorities this offseason? And, uh, you know, what's your outlook on next year? Well, the number one priority is, is what do you do with Jeremy Grant? I think most people believe that he's going to be traded. Um, he is eligible for uh, a four-year, hundred-plus million-dollar extension. Um, I think with the Pistons, it's like over 180 million or something like that. Most people believe they're not going to pay him that money. That handicaps them a little bit financially. And outside of him, as you just went over, they've got great contracts. I mean, Sadiq mm -hmm. Bay had a phenomenal year last year, and the dude was only making like two million dollars. Yep. So. They're in a great spot financially if they trade Jeremy Grant for some other assets, maybe tra uh, draft picks, players, something like that. I really think this team needs to take a look at what the Dallas Mavericks did with Luka Doncic okay, and follow that model. Cade Cunningham, I think, is cut from a similar cloth as Luka. They're guys that can do a little bit of everything. They have great size for somebody that runs your offense. They're not the most athletic or the most explosive mm -hmm players on the court but they're great decision makers with the ball they can score they can pass they can do a little bit of everything and so I think the Pistons really need to be thinking about how to surround Cunningham with those same types of players that Dallas is surrounding Luka Doncic three and D wings they need to sure up the front court decide what they're doing with Marvin Bagley are they going to give him an extension make him a part of the future uh, Sadiq Bey is definitely one of those types of guys mm-hmm the Pistons are really hoping that Jaden Ivey falls to them at five, but if I were them, I would much rather draft a guy like Shaden Sharp or even A.J. Griffin. Again, it's those same types of players that are really, really good outside shooters and quality defenders. That's the type of person or player that I would be looking to, to surround Cade Cunningham with moving forward. Yeah, I, I agree with everything that you said. Uh, this team just is in the middle of a rebuild and they are not uh they're not on the positive side of the rebuild right now they're still in the tear it down and add young players and draft pick stage i think i agree with you 100 percent. they need to figure out what they're doing with jeremy grant i think they need to trade this guy for young prospects and draft picks this team just needs more talent they just need more young talent to build around so i would look to trade him 
for the best package I can get surrounding young players and draft picks. I think you got to figure out what you're doing with Kelly Olynyk. I mentioned uh, he's got two years left on his deal. One of them is partially guaranteed, so he could potentially be seen as an expiring deal next year and maybe have some value in that. Um, if this team does need to pick up, uh, you know, a, a high contract guy to add some more draft picks, I would be willing to do something like that because they have, you know, $40 million in cap space. I agree with you about Marvin Bagley. I think they need to re-sign him. I think they took the gamble. They got him. I think he's not well, going to... It makes a lot of sense if you're going to get rid of Jeremy Grant, right? Yep. Like, he's an immediate pl person that can step into that role, and you're probably going to get him for a relatively reasonable deal. Yeah, exactly. I think it's going to be very reasonable, especially for a f former number two overall pick who's only 23 with a lot of potential. He just needs to stay healthy. I love what I've seen from Cade Cunningham. I expect him to be the future franchise star of this team. Corey Joseph, as I mentioned, has got a $5 million player option. I'm not mad if he opts in for next season because when you have a bunch of young guys on this team, you do need veterans, but you need veterans that aren't overpaid and that don't inhibit your team from adding talent. $5 million for Corey Joseph next season uh, is not a bad deal for me at all. I'm looking ahead to the draft here because that's the most important need coming yep. up. Is it going to be Jaden Ivey? Is it going to be Shaden Sharp? Is it going to be Keegan Murray or one of these other guys? I'm not quite sure, but if I'm Detroit, I'm drafting best available at this point. I think that they are at that stage in their rebuild right now. Is they just need to draft best available. They need to add young talent, young uh, or picks, and uh, they need to figure it out from there. I like the direction this team is heading. There's a lot of young players on this team. I don't think they're really, uh, you know, looking bad as far as cap space wise. It's just going to be a long rebuild for them. I'm thinking three, maybe four years from now, they will be relevant. Uh, and sometimes that's what it takes. Yeah. I mean, Kay Cunningham is a really, I like him a lot. Uh, he's a very special player. And that al alone, just having a guy like that, means your rebuild could actually go faster uh you know than you think if he continues to get better a and having a guy like that again that's why i think i would not be drafting best available i would be drafting for the fit right now i think there's a lot of guys in this draft a lot of wings that are very similar and do a lot of, of the same things well i love keegan murray but again, you've got Sadiq Bey and probably Marvin Bagley who are going to already be at those forward positions. Maybe Keegan Murray beats out Marvin Bagley in training camp for the starting spot. But then you're like, well, why did we just sign Marvin Bagley if, that, you if that's the case? Play Bagley at the not five. A, not, a bad, yeah, not a bad option to have. Um, but again, it's same thing for Jaden Ivey. Fantastic player, but I, I'm not sure about the fit with him and Cade Cunningham together. I would much rather see them go after somebody that complements Cade Cunningham's skill set much, much better uh, than just taking the best available player. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I just think this team needs to add talent. That That's the bottom oh, line Oh, they for do. Me. Absolutely. And uh, it's going to be a while. There's no, you know, when you're a team like Detroit, Sacramento, Orlando, you know, you're not a free agent destination. People are not lining yeah. up to come to your franchise. So you have to build through the draft. You have to build through trades. And that means that, you know, you're going to be involved in certain years where you're like, okay, we're not doing anything this year. We just need to add as much talent as we can, develop the young guys, and move on. I expect them to be in the draft lottery again next season. Now, maybe they win the draft lottery like Orlando did this year. And maybe that helps speed up their rebuild process. But, you know, pick five is tough. We've heard about this being yep. maybe a three-player draft. Now, you're always going to find players late in the draft that, you know, can help a franchise. But pick number sure. five is always difficult, right? Because you're kind of right on that fringe where it's like, we missed out on all the guys that we know are going to be good. And now we have either guys that are super athletic or guys that have played well in college, but we don't really know how it transitions to the NBA. So Detroit Pistons are in a tough spot here. Um, I do expect them to add some talent at this year's draft, and I expect them, like I said, to be back in the lottery, probably towards the top of the draft next season. And uh, hopefully between those two players, Cade Cunningham, Marvin Bagley, and some of these other young players, they can help become relevant again. Mm -hmm. But uh, the key thing for me that I'm watching is Jeremy Grant and what happens with him this oh, offseason. Yeah, definitely. 
If you are a Detroit Pistons fan, please hit that like button down below and please subscribe to the channel. Calvin and I are going to be here all offseason breaking down offseason needs for the Detroit Pistons as well as many other teams around the league. We're going to be doing some fun NBA 2K rebuilds and stuff like that. So if you love basketball, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Milwaukee Bucks lose to the Boston Celtics in seven games. Their second best player, Chris Middleton, has been injured pretty much the entire postseason. Um, he's making $37.9 million next season, and he's got a player option for $40 million this season after that. Let's jump here into the numbers with the Milwaukee Bucks and try and figure out what they can do to improve and get back to the NBA Finals and win another championship. So I mentioned Chris Middleton is under contract for two more seasons. Giannis is under contract for four more seasons, 42.4, 45.6, 48.7, and a huge player option in 2025-2026 of $51.9 million dollars. Drew Holiday is under contract for three more seasons, 32.3, 34.6, and a player option at 36.9. Brooke Lopez is entering in the final year of his deal. Uh, it is an expiring $13.9 million contract. Serge Ibaka is officially off the books, as well as Wesley Matthews. Um, we have Pat Connington returning, if he chooses to. Player option for $5.7 million. Bobby Portis. $4.5 million player option. Grayson Allen is under contract for two more seasons, one at 9.6 and one at 10.3. George Hill is under contract for one more year at $4 million. Calvin, this is a ton of money between their top four players in Giannis, uh, Middleton, Holiday, and Lopez. I'm not a mathematician here, but this is uh, looking like towards $130 million for those four guys next season. That is over the salary cap. That doesn't allow you a lot of flexibility or a lot of room. What does this team need to do? What are the biggest question marks regarding this squad? And uh, what can we expect from them this offseason and next season? Well, I think, Phoenix here in, in the chat hit it hit the nail on the head with this team. Most teams that we see as championship contenders are kind of in the same boat every offseason, right? Like you have your top three or four guys locked up. A lot of times you're committing a lot of money to them. So the question is how do you fill out the rest of the roster? You know, with these veteran guys that have been around like a P.J. Tucker, um, good three-point shooters, two-way players, guys that you can get on the mid-level exception or, or veteran minimum deals. That's how these teams are built. Um, their, their issues going into this offseason, number one, they got to get healthy, right, like everybody does. They need Middleton back. But like Phoenix said in the chat here, Bobby Portis and Pat Connaughton both have player options for next season. Mm-hmm. Bobby Portis was huge for them this year. He's getting paid. Career highs in four, in points and rebounds. Uh, career high in minutes played this season. He started 59 games for them when mm -hmm. Brooke Lopez was out with back surgery. He's probably going to get like 13 or 14 million a year in the off season. Yeah. I don't think Milwaukee has the cap flexibility to pay him that. So I definitely see him opting out. Connaughton is a, a question mark for me. Um, I, he I think he's a valuable player and probably is valued by a lot of teams in this league, but I don't know if opting out for him earns him as much more money as Bobby Portis is going to get when yeah. he opts out. Yeah. And the question for Pat Connaughton is, does he want to go somewhere else or does he want to, is he looking for a bigger role like maybe a DiVincenzo was or something like that? Or does he want to come back and keep playing for this team and have another chance to win? So he's a question mark to me as to whether he opts out or not, but they, that's going to determine how they fill out the rest of this roster, whether or not they can get some of these guys back, and who do they look for to replace them. Yeah, for me, the biggest offseason need for this team is get healthy and add shooters. Uh, I think we saw that in the playoffs this year. Giannis needs shooters around him, a guy like that that can get to the basket so easily uh, that's, you know, as amazing of a player as he is, he needs help, right? And how you help out a great player like that is getting shooters. 
Uh, it just takes the pressure off of him. It opens up the lane for him to get to the basket. And it just makes it so that he doesn't have to work as hard for every single bucket that he gets. And then he has more energy towards the end of the game. So for me, you know, number one goal, Chris Middleton needs to come back. He needs to be healthy. Uh, I like Drew Holiday. I like Brooke Lopez. Um, I think Bobby Portis, like like you said, opts out and gets paid somewhere else. I'm mixed on Pat Connington. Um, but this team just needs to figure out a way to add some more shooters. And, you know, they kind of screwed themselves in getting rid of Dante DiVincenzo, in my opinion, because there's not a lot of young up-and-coming guys that this squad really has to, to help yeah. uh, push them. You know, like everyone talks about you need veterans, you need older players to win in the NBA. Look at the Lakers this season. They had a bunch of veterans, a bunch of older players, and they just didn't have that spark that youth gives them. We saw that with the Memphis Grizzlies this season, right? It's the almost like they're too young to know that they're not this good or they're not good enough. It, it gives you like a, just an unlimited amount of confidence. That, I think, is what this team is missing. So I think they need to find a way to bring some more youth to this roster. They need to add shooters, and they just need to get healthy. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. A uh, couple of good questions in the chat here. Do you want to maybe look up? what Milwaukee's draft capital is like for the off season. I think they have I think it's a late pick. Their pick this year, their first round pick. Yeah, pick 24. Yep. Yeah, that's a good question about Brooke Lopez. He he is getting older um and he yeah, he he carries a bit of a price tag, but I think he's very valuable for that team. Um he's still maybe not the rim protector that he was a few years ago. But he still is able to to help in that regard. Great outside shooter, spaces the floor really well. I think he plays with Giannis very very well. Um, so I I'd probably give it one more year with him, you know. Yeah, and I would try and bring back uh, Bobby Portis if there is a way. Uh, Progressive G saying Carmichael Dave said he wants the Kings to go after Bobby Portis. There's going to be a lot of. Yeah. interest for him yeah. around the league and there's a lot a, of interest. a lot of players the kings want to go after because when you're not making the playoffs you got to add talent bobby portis is one of those guys that he played incredibly well he's going to get a good deal but it's like is that play sustainable have we seen a new bobby portis I'm Thank you so much for watching. As always, please don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button. You can join us live every single weekday, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also don't forget to tip your bartender.